Welcome back everybody. Today what we're going to do is be talking about the phenomenon known as line spectra and electromagnetic radiation and see what it has to do with some of the problems that we are encountering. So at this point, they, uh, the scientists knew that uh, basically there was a planetary model, that there was a nucleus in the center that was like the sun, and then the planets uh, orbited the uh, sun uh, you know, like they do, and they thought the electrons did kind of the same thing. The electrons around the nucleus were kind of like the planets around the sun, and they um, thought they were in well-defined energy levels. <clears throat> now, in order to really understand what's going on here, you have to understand a little bit about, about electromagnetic radiation. And so that's going to take us back to our physics days. So, ooh, sorry if I gave you the chills there. But if a white light comes in here for our prism, we know that it gets broken into our Roy G. Biv that's there. And that's all pretty and so forth. But there's actually more going on to this picture if you look closer at it. So compare the red and compare the purple. Do you notice how the red has much more space in between the crests and troughs than the purple does here. So we can see that the purple, they are much closer together. So if you remember from your physics days, those things are called wavelength and frequency. And they are going to have everything to do with what we're going to be talking about here today. So remember that wavelength is the difference between crest to crest or trough to trough. So in this example up here, there's a very short wavelength as compared to this example down here that has a very long wavelength. But frequency is how many of those wavelengths there are within a given uh, particular space. So this one up here, because the waves are tremendously short, you can fit a lot of them within that space and so they are considered to be very frequent or have a high frequency whereas these guys here because the waves are considerably longer you can get few of them fewer of them within that space and so their frequency is also less also remember that the energy of these waves are directly proportional to the frequency of them now, if you can't uh, remember all of this, there's, uh, I'm sure you can find any number of videos that are on the tubes of you. Sorry, I'm going to close all my files here. Um, the tubes of you here. And uh, this guy's does a pretty good job if you start at around three minutes or so on his video. So uh, what he's got here is he's got a spring set up. So this is an example of a standing wave that has a tremendously long wavelength. Um, so the wavelength is big, but the frequency is very small. There are not very many of them that are there. So again, wavelength and frequency are inversely uh, proportional to each other. As the wavelength goes up, the frequency goes down. Um, so this is a long wavelength and a small frequency. Now, he's going to put a little bit more into it and check it out. The wavelength gets smaller, so the end individual waves get smaller but there's more of those waves and so they are more frequent so here is wavelength down frequency up so which one of these has more energy to it well I think it's pretty clear that this guy here he's having to put far more energy into making that wave be standing than the other one look how lazy it is with this one here so this one here this is a lazy wave a low energy wave so low energy is low frequency is high wavelength in order to get high energy high energy is more like this where you have high energy high frequency low wavelength so now let's go back to this guy here. So all of this perhaps makes a little bit more sense here. So high frequency here is high energy, but it is a small wavelength. Low frequency is low energy, but it is a long wavelength. So wavelength and frequency are inversely proportional. Wavelength and energy are inversely proportional. Frequency and energy are directly proportional to each other. All right. Okay, so now we get to the new stuff. <clears throat> Scientists began to take these energies that were coming off of various elements and so forth, and they were sending them through prism. 
Now, here's what they expected to have happen. So if you run an electrical current through something like neon or hydrogen or something, it gives off a particular color of light. What they expected to have happen, if it gave off something like a pink light here, they expected that maybe you would just see a progression of different red or pink colors coming off of there. But when they actually did the experiment, they got a very, very different result indeed. So if you take a look at this light here, it's kind of orangish. You would expect all of your um, uh, results through the prism to be just uh, kind of orange or maybe a little yellow in there and certainly there is a big old yellow line that's right here in the middle here but um, in reality uh, there were a whole bunch of other colors that they totally didn't expect I mean look at all these greens that you have over here they didn't expect any of these greens that were over there um, and you notice how if we take a look at each of these lines there is a big gap in between one line and the next line that was there so what's up with those gaps well I'll spare you all the gory details but suffice it to say that the idea that they came up with was this the idea of the quantum mechanical model and in the quantum mechanical model, basically what it says is that these electrons can exist in certain quanta or certain energy states, and they can go to a different energy state, but they can't exist anywhere in between. So you can jump from one to the other in a teleporty kind of fashion, but you can't be anywhere in between. So you could be at this energy level here, or you could be at this energy level here, but you are not allowed to be anywhere in between these guys here. So that red area is off limits. So you can be at one energy level, you could be at the other energy level, but you can't be anywhere in between. It would be like this. You can be down here on the floor, or you could be up here at the top of the table, but you are not allowed to just hang out here in the middle. And the weird part about the quantum mechanical model is that you would jump from this one directly to this one without going anywhere in between, all right? So you would be in one energy state, the lower, another energy state, the higher, or <clears throat> one or the other, but not anywhere in between. The other part about it is that it is the same amount of energy to go from one state to another, just in the opposite direction. So if you wanna go from here at the low energy state to here at the high energy state, you have to put energy into the system or that would be absorption, right? So to go from one to two, that's energy of absorption. But you could also then go from energy level two back down to energy level one here, and that would be emission. That would be emission. So absorption and emission are exactly the same thing, just in opposite direction. So here's what happened when they run energy through hydrogen. You get four very specific lines, kind of a red, a teal, a blue, and a purple that's there. Then if you have hydrogen absorb energy instead, you get exactly the same lines, just in an absorption setting. So here are the same two things that are compared. The top one is the absorption spectrum, the bottom one is the emission spectrum, and you'll notice that there are four very specific lines and nothing else in between. Those are the only four transitions for hydrogen in the visible spectrum that we can see with our naked eye that's there. So, <clears throat> Absorption is going from any low energy state to any higher energy state, going further away from the nucleus. So again, absorption is going from low to high. Low to high. Emission is going from high to low. So emission is going from high to low, absorption is going from low to high. So you'll notice that the energy is coming in, in this, and it's going out in this, all right? Now, we're gonna run into a couple of problems with this model. Taking a look at this, you'll notice that the way that they have represented this, which they do quite often just for convenience's sake, is that all of the energy levels are nice and neatly spaced out from each other, right? From one to two to three. Well, 
let's check out what would happen logically if that were the case. So here I've got energy levels one through four, and you'll notice that they are all nice and neatly spaced from each other from here to here to here, right? So uh, what if we went from four down to three? Okay, so we're gonna do a transition of emission from level four down to level three that's there. Well, it turns out that if you do that, it emits a wavelength of 1,875 nanometers. You'll just have to trust me on that. The math on that is not important at all. Well, what would happen if we tried to then go from three to two, right? Well, according to this diagram, if we went from three to two, the transition for three to two should be the same as the transition from four to three because the energy difference from here to here and here to here is the same as the energy difference from here to here and here to here. But when they actually do it and do the experiment, it is not the same. It turns out that it's 656 nanometers, which is a much shorter wave. And the same is true if we continue this down to two to one. Well, if it's two to one and on this diagram, the difference is the same from here to here as the same from here to here as the same from here to here, then all of these transitions should be identical. And in reality, they are not. The transition from two to one emits a wavelength of 122 nanometers. Again, for reasons that you'll just have to trust me on. So what is taking place here with these guys? Well, we are going from a high, wa uh, high wavelength to a lower wavelength to an even lower wavelength. So in each of these cases, as you go from this, the wavelength is going down. Well, what does that mean? That means then that the frequency would have to be going up, which means that the energy would have to be going up according to our um, model from before. So this idea that they are nice and evenly spaced like this is not accurate. Pause for a moment and think what would we have to do to our model to show that the energy difference between two to one is greater than three to two is greater than uh, four to three. Take a moment. All right, I'm gonna assume that you have unpaused at that point. So what we are instead going to do is we are going to take into account the fact that all of these energies and frequencies are different. So remember that if four to three is a long wavelength and two to one down here is a short wavelength, then what we are gonna see is that this guy up here is high wavelength, low frequency, low energy. This guy down here is low wavelength, high frequency, high energy. And so consequently, a better model looks like this. This is level one, two, three, and four. And you'll notice the difference between four to three is smaller than the difference between three to two is smaller than the difference between two to one. So in other words, as you go further and further out from the nucleus, these um, shells and these energy levels get closer and closer together. So the largest single jump for a single transition of one uh, level is the two to one. So the two to one is always the largest single level jump. Everything else gets smaller and smaller or closer and closer together as you go further out. So again, the shells get closer and closer together the further you go out from the nucleus. So if we compare these guys, a jump of three to one is gonna be of perhaps blue energy, which is of smaller frequency, long, um, I'm sorry, smaller wavelength, larger frequency, larger energy, than some of these other transitions. The smallest transition three to two here might be red energy because that is of long wavelength, low frequency, low energy, whereas something like this is going to be of higher energy, 